Hello and welcome back to the channel. Well, in this episode, it's mission get the wabbit, get the wabbit. I've been asked by uh, the neighbouring landowner to the airfield to try and sort out the rabbits that are eating all of his crops. Also got a new toy to try out as well. Well, you join me here on a lovely sunny evening over at the airfield where I've just finished zeroing my new Pulsar Digex C50. Now, I've struggled um, quite considerably to get hold of one of these. In fact, it's probably easier to book a ride on Shergar for pony trekking than it is to get one of these. So my thanks go out to Terry at the Rugby Gun Shop for finding one and letting me have it today. So cheers for that, Terry. Right, so I'm here at the airfield tonight. Uh, don't worry, that's not giant mole hills. That's a, an archaeological team that are here doing a dig looking for Roman ruins. So that's really all we need, isn't it? Them to find something here and then shut the place down for months on end. So hopefully Tony Robinson's uh, away on holiday uh, and he's not going to get a sniff of this. Anyway, so the rifle's now zeroed at 60 yards. This is my Lithgow Arms 22LR. Uh, and my mission tonight is for the neighbouring farmer who's made a complaint about the rabbits coming from this airfield onto his crops. So that's the plan tonight, to uh, give the scope a good good go out in day, uh, evening and night time. So uh, hopefully we'll have a bit of footage later on uh, for you to enjoy. So thanks for watching. I'll see you later on. Perfect habitat for rabbits and also this is where the deer live. So uh, I'd be surprised if I spook a couple of roe deer as I'm creeping around here. But uh, this is now circling a couple of lakes. And once I get up on top of this bank, it's a straight walk down and then I should be walking back in up the side of the lakes with the wind in my face. So that's why I've come this way, which is the longest way around. Loads of deer evidence on the ground there. That was last week I was here, just actually across here on the airfield. Parked up about 160 yards away, kicking them off as they were coming through this hedge line onto the uh, airfield. So. I'm going to carry on walking around now. Not on the menu tonight, little munt jack. Just over 100 yards away. So the clock is right, it's just quarter past seven. There he goes, quite up there. Nice little buck. She's 210 yards away and she's got her ears pricked up because there's one in the bushes over to my right barking away. There you go. Well, bearing in mind, did I say she? It might be a, oh it's a fella. It's, uh, we're just coming up to the row deer rut season now, so bucks are in season as of today. Um, he's going to be going around looking to see if he can get lucky. going to pan across now behind me. Right, so what you can see here now is a lovely established lake in an old quarry. It's about 150 metres long, 150 yards long and about 35 wide. Well, I can hear you all saying, God, you're lucky you've got all that ground. Well, is the sad part of the story. This is all going to be built on in the next year or two, so it's called make the most of it while you can time. Um, I said the farmer who owns the land where I've just filmed that roebuck is upset because the rabbits are coming off up here onto his crops, so that's why I'm down this side now and I'm going to walk up, walk up along that path and then up to the left and have the wind in my face. So. That's where I'm going to 
start doing my rabbit hunting up along that path. This fella is 69 yards away. Not anymore. He's singing the stairway to heaven. So I'm sure everybody has their own ways of stalking and creeping around, but for those people that haven't, uh, the way I do it is, obviously I use a thermal spotter, and in this case I'm on a, a long uh, driveway, which is about 400 yards long. So if something was to come out where I've just shot that rabbit, I'll keep my eye on it, and then I'm going to move this phone down to where my eye position is and what I'm looking at. Move down, constantly keeping an eye on the ground so you're not going to step on something that's going to make a, a massive crack. And I'll do this for about 10 yards, as quiet as possible. And this is all sort of gravel I'm on, so you be as quiet as you can. Obviously, I wouldn't be talking normally, so I'm only doing this because I've seen that there's no rabbits here. But distance of about 10 yards and then stop and then look up see if your target's still there in this case the grass bank that I'm creeping to is still there the other important thing to always consider is what's going on behind you so as quiet as possible just turn around obviously again if you've got a thermal you quick scan down there you could see but that's where I've just come up from so it's about a 400 yard um, old road. It's got broken up tarmac on it, so it's a bit gritty and gravelly. Over that bank is one of the lakes. I said, so again, I'll keep my eye, I'll make sure my, the target I'm looking at is still there, quite happily eating away. Go back down to the eye line, carry on for about another, between sort of seven to 10 yards. Just be aware of what you're likely to step on. If there's a lot of sticks there, so we'll go round them. Keep close to the side of the hedge line if you can. That's about done about 10 yards. Stop, slowly look up. And just continue doing that. And that's the way to creep around. But always, always, always look behind you. Because you never know something it could just come out as you've been around so always do a quick check behind you if you're going out with two people you could have one person concentrate on what's going on in front and the other person just keep an eye on, on the rear okay, this one is 68 yards away I'll pull the crosshairs off you'll see him sat there on the bank this is still on the colour mode. No doubt about that. Nice and quiet. I've got a bit more scurrying around in the edges to my left. I'm just going to sit and wait now, just in case something else comes running out. Just be a case of really quiet, walk slowly, a good pair of well fitting boots so they don't clob around. Just take your time. Don't rush. So that fella's 58 yards away. No doubt about that. No. So I know a lot of you uh, are all familiar how to creep around, but I know there's several people, uh, small holding owners and allotment owners, that are new to shooting, uh, that have bought rifles, so this is, uh, those little bits are really for them.
that's got us 57 yards away. Remember, this is still on daytime colour mode, so pretty good to see. Nothing sorted out. Right, there's two here, there's that one at 60 yards. Those two done and dusted. Right. Fortunately for them, I've got all that lot between me and them, which doesn't help. So, what I might do is just see if I can move back a bit. Not being a tank commander. That's the way to do it. 66 yards in the dark. There's no way I could see those naked eye. More than happy with this scope. This chap's 65 yards away. He's two at 57. That's my rangefinder ping in there that you can see. This one's 69 yards. Something to lick your lips with. Right, these characters over here, remember I showed you that I'm actually I'm in the middle of the earthworks now where they're looking for this Roman villa so I've switched I've put a switch in off the back of my fuse box to turn the daylight running lights off so I'm actually driving around in complete darkness so I've just got to be a bit careful now, don't, don't go down one of these blooming great big holes and get discovered by time team in about 300 years time so I've just got to sort of weave my way in and out of these this works that they're doing, but there's got to be about 30 rabbits over here. Just have to see if I can pick my way over there now, in and out of the, the um, diggings. So 61 yards away. What I should have said is the IR light with the C50 is on its lowest setting. Out for him. 57 yards. This thing is 
mate top and you can stick your hand. Right, so that first one, that's 56 yards. That's one I shot previous. These are out to 80, so I'm not even going to bother with those. So we'll have a crack at this fella. sticks there but they're not isn't really a problem in that case but normally you'll see something really bright on a thermal image and then put your IR light on and it's just you know, just met with a I mean, great big thick wood but with that one there's just a little hole there I could get through to him that but there go, there's another one down there somewhere we'll leave him Again, there's another case of a one that shows up in a thermal. But you've just got to weave your way through the old sticks to get to him. This one's 59 yards, it's just on the edge of the hedge line. You could do with him sitting up, or just poking one in the back of the head. But Another 59 yarder. I'll explain to you in a minute why they're all at sort of 59, 60 yards. So I zeroed this rifle yesterday at 60 yards, and the reason for that is the perimeter track um, around this old airfield is around 60 yards from the hedge line. So that's what I normally sort of gauge it at, and I just tend to drive on the opposite side of the track. So I'm still on the grass, just to avoid a bit of the sound. As I said, I've, I've put a switch in to turn off the daylight running lights on the truck, so I'm just driving around in total darkness now, and just using the thermal looking out the driver's window. So that's that's why it's this range. Uh, sometimes I might take a little bit longer shot, but they're all around between sort of high 40s and 60 yards right, this chap's at 42 yards right, this fella is 45 yards and that actually through there is the entrance to my screw hide. So there's the footpath there, so it goes through there. So. That's him out of the way. It's a great big rabbit burrow just over there. That's probably where he's from anyway. Yep, so that goes all the way through into that uh, pallet hide that I've had here for about four years. Well now there's a little bit of video clip from one of my customers uh, and a keen shooter. So this is uh, in the back garden of Keith, one of my customers. This is an 18 metre range that he's built and that is a metal coke bottle shaped uh, target holder with 6 millimetre holes drilled in it. So he's got a 2.2, so it's a 55 mil pellet going through a 6 mil hole. He's filled the plastic bottle up at the back with water and red food colouring. Um, I think I've created a monster. He's doing a good job. He's a real keen shooter. In fact, yesterday he spent a couple of hours on the range at the Oxford Gun Company, him and another fella, uh, and they'd put cocktail sticks, you know, the sausage on sticks things, at 30 yards, and between them they were cutting those in half. Uh, this is an FX Maverick 2.2. It's fair to say Keith loves his shooting and uh, I'll definitely be taking him out again on a foxing mission. Um, I think he deserves it for the amount of effort he puts into it. Well done Keith. 
and thanks for the film. And as I said before, there's been a lot of people that have bought guns and scopes, uh, land, new landowners, so thanks to them for their custom. Uh, and I say there's a few little tips on there on that video for you. So uh, enjoy your shooting. Uh, look forward to seeing you again soon. In the meantime, cheerio.